So how do you take your coffee? Uh, one cream and two sugars. Oh, really? Not in one this small usually, but yeah. This is gas station coffee if you ask me, <laughs> or hotel. This is hotel coffee okay. right here, but it gets the job done. What do you got? Um, I make my coffee with, I put some, a little bit of heavy cream and a little bit of honey. Normally like, at home perfect. I do honey. I don't, okay. I don't know if Chick I don't. They would probably find honey for me, wouldn't they, at Chick fil A? <laughs> they would. They're like, we're gonna go across the street to the grocery store and get you some honey, honey. <laughs> this will always be number one self care, right here. This is. You think so? Think? Well, okay, we wanna distinguish today between treats and self care. Oh, no, okay. this is not a treat. We'll work it out. Okay. <laughs> Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom, and on Sunday mornings, so glad to get to be joined by my twin sister, Diana. And it's obviously not Sunday. Oh, because Chick-fil-A wouldn't be open. <laughs> we have had a few comments, like, they're like, how do you get to church on time when you're like doing these videos? So, Or I just reheated it, because that could well, happen to me these that days. That could happen. That could totally happen, okay? Right? You don't know what day it is, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I don't know what day I it know, is. Right? It's exactly. just us. <laughs> <obvious. laughs> Okay, right. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like a week and a half ago, I did a video on minimalist self-care. Yeah. And I was making the distinction between escape like, and actual care. And then Diana brought I up this. Yeah, from a mother far from home. Yes. Sign up for her emails. She's brilliant. Even if you don't have young kids, mm -hmm. sign up. Yeah. So she, this is how she puts it. Treats are like one-time things. Getting your nails done, a ladies' night out. <laughs> These are very one-time, right? Yeah. Ladies' night out. When was your last? Year? Right. Ladies' night out. Okay. Um, occasional weekend away. Yeah. yeah. That would be a treat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they are great and a lot of fun, but they don't sustain our daily moods, our mental health. Hmm. Which, if you think about it, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What did you say yours was? Taco Bell and, and Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah, that was more like when I was selling real estate, so I'd actually be like out and about, yeah. and it was just like, if you were having a good day or a bad day, <laughs> it was Taco Bell and Starbucks and a little social media. Taking care of yourself, on the other hand, involves daily habits and routines that keep your mood high, your stress low, and your peace right there. Hmm. Now, this is how I feel. I don't know if anybody else feels this way. I don't feel like I deserve it. Like daily, does, when you hear oh, really? daily, yeah. does it kind of feel like, I don't have time or can't commit to daily. How, yeah, that's I don't have time, time for me. It. Like, yeah. how would I justify that? Where would I put it? Mm -hmm. I feel that way. Well, and I remember when the, especially when the kids were little, Tom would offer to watch the kids, but that was very stressful to me because yeah. he got stressed out by the kids. You come like, home then to like you were like really weighing the cost yeah. of like you know it's just easier for me to stay and help yeah. than to take a little time away. And like I said too, I mean a lot of times then I would go wander around Target, I'd definitely get Starbucks, and I would come home and I'm like I don't actually feel any better. Yeah. And what I actually wanted was some adult interaction because I had been home alone all day. <laughs> exactly. So I feel like it gets very convoluted and. Mm -hmm. And what we need and want, like, changes yep. daily, almost. It feels well, and like. let's even just say that we got it all figured out and, like, we meet up for coffee. Or you meet mm -hmm. up for coffee with a friend. Again, that one-time moment feels good and is fun, but you go back home. And so you do need something that's continuous or more habitual right. or sustaining. I'm going to shoot for twice weekly. Okay. Okay. We'll you gotta start, start there. Things that yeah. sustain us. So this one really spoke to me because recently I was painting with Adley who was two. She was mixing all the colors together and it was becoming oh. like, a, but it was becoming kind of a mosaic thing. Right. And so I then was challenging myself because I do have a little bit of an art, a fine art background. I was challenging myself to take her mixed up blobs and take them, make them into forms with some shading. Actually, I think I sent you and mom then, the second one was a turtle. Yeah. And I was like, I sort of shaded the shell on the turtle <laughs> to make it look more 3D. It was pretty good. And that was self-care. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so the reason, that's the number one on my list here is embrace your creative side. Mm, when yeah. I was doing it, I was like, this is so fun. Have yeah. you ever got involved with the kids on a project and you're like, oh, well, I, oh, it feels good to be creative. Well, that's what I feel like remodeling our houses and like yeah. doing the campers, because people will be like, why are you painting a perfectly good camper? Yeah. And like, it's really enjoyable. Or I did yeah. my plaster art, or I yeah. stenciled the wall. Like, I love that. And yeah. I think different people, you express it differently. Yep. Um, but I like so 
so have hobbies so much fun. are mm -hmm. the thing. Like again, for me right now, it'll probably be with the kids, you okay. know. But uh, maybe I could. I don't know. What would I do for a hobby? I mean, I have been. I've painted every wall in our house. Yeah, I do enjoy doing that. And I have seen people that have been um, on like master classes where you can sign up for that subscription. Mm -hmm. They'll take a watercolor class or a sketching class yeah. or a poetry class. Yeah. And again, it's just learning something new, engaging your brain in that way. And what your brain gets to do while you're using the right side, the left side kind of gets a little breather, yeah. gets to kind of file some things away and you do feel refreshed. So that's one of the biggest habits of self-care that you can develop is a hobby, especially something crafty that engages your creative side. Do you have anything that you do consistently? Oh, uh, remodeling, campers. Oh yeah. You remodel campers side. as a hobby. Yeah. Okay. That's great. <laughs> um, obviously praying or meditating, we'll probably touch on that a little bit more later. Yep. Read a good book. You got yes. me hooked on this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. After I became a mom, it cannot be serious. It cannot be scary. Yeah. And it cannot be intense. No it, action. It needs or... to be lighthearted. Even yep. some of the historical fiction that I used to enjoy. I know. I mean, history was tough. Yeah. So I need lighthearted. I actually used to read Amish like romance books. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. Because. Yeah, they kiss. That's it. That's it. At yeah. the very end. Once. Yes. After they're married. Yeah. So, um, just something like super lighthearted. Yeah. And on my Kindle, on my phone, I turn the screen light way down and that works okay for me even yeah. before bed. My brain unwinds. Right. It's a good habit for me. And if you actually look at the research, I don't want to totally reiterate my whole video from last week, but reading fiction relaxes your brain. You're able to escape in a way that's restorative to your brain. When we watch TV, we're escaping in a way that does not reduce our stress levels at mm -hmm. all. And depending on the type of show you're watching, it can increase your stress levels. Yeah. So that's why a lot of us feel slimed or yucky after watching a bunch of Netflix, but you read a fiction book and you actually feel regenerated again. Yep. And reading is the best way to be more interesting in conversations. True. So when you do finally get to go out to coffee. I mean, sometimes I feel a little left out because people will be like, oh, did you see what happened on... Yeah. I can't even think of a popular show right now, <laughs> but I'm like, okay. I'm okay <laughs> being left out. A little bit. I need to be right now. Okay. <laughs> Write in a journal. Hmm. I haven't done that in a long time. Yeah. I used to do a gratitude journal habitually. Yeah. I loved that. Especially, it was before I got married. You were married, had kids, you know, you just can be in a little bit of a funk. And so when I started doing that every night before bed, I felt like the most blessed and content person in the world. Yeah. It is amazing. You know, we actually, uh, we did a Facebook Live with Dr. Paul from Live On yeah. Purpose not very long back. And I had asked him a question. I'm like, okay, Dr. Paul, we're all feeling just kind of yuck mm -hmm. right now, right? We're shut up at home, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I said, like, what would be your number one piece of advice? That's right. He said 25 gratitudes every day. 25? We were like 25. <laughs> That's a lot. And do you know what else he said? And half of them should be about whatever right. is really bothering you right now. If it's a relationship, adult kids that are gone yeah. or whatever, um, job stuff, then half of them should be about that. That was so good. Yeah, and 25. I mean, you'll hear a lot of like, write three things. And I it's like, five, no, 25. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. It gets your brain going in the right direction and yeah. it totally is refreshing. Yeah. Listen to an enjoyable podcast. Oh yeah, I've been doing more of that lately. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations? I don't, I still haven't really gotten into podcasts. Put so. your recommendations in the comment, especially ones that are like stories, oh, you know, yeah. that are just that engaging, lighthearted, positive, that would yeah. help us unwind and Not feel good about like the world. Not like self-improvement or Do you know like what my sister-in-law was listening to on podcast? You guys, maybe you've heard true of crime. this. Not true crime, doctors who intentionally harm their patients. Why? I'm like, do you want to never go to the doctor again? Yeah. Or trust anybody? I mean, it's kind of like unsolved mysteries, right? Like where you're just kind of like, you can't help again. that until you have kids. They don't have kids yet. I know. That's how I, she can listen to it. Yeah, once yep. you have kids, no. It changes. I think okay. so. But, but okay, so put your positive yeah. podcast recommendations. We've also, do they have play, like, play board games? I oh, feel like we're just going back to the 50s and they just did it all, right? It's so fun though. <laughs> oh man, Rummy Cube. If you don't have it, yeah. I mean, you can play it with two people. You can play it with one person on your phone if that's mm -hmm. the season of life you're in. You can play it with two people, up to four. Little bit of strategy. Oh yeah, a little no, bit of fun. like, you know, kind of jockeying around. It's actually, I know phase 10 is a very popular card game. Mm -hmm. It's like phase 10 up a step yeah. because you can play on everybody else's to make your runs and sets. Oh yeah, Tom and I will play after the kids go to bed. Like yeah. it's super fun, or Canasta. And you have lighthearted conversation. You can't yeah. have like too serious of a conversation. Yeah. Your brain gets to unplug a little. 
so if I do games on a phone or iPad, yeah. I'm addicted to them and I don't want to put it down or go to sleep. Yeah. If I do it on paper, like if I do Sudoku on paper, a crossword puzzle on paper, then I'm not addicted. I can do a couple, set it down, and I think it's the flashing and the moving yeah. and the ding when you get it right. Like That's the only thing I could think because yeah. I'm like, there's a very big difference between if I'm doing it on a device or if I'm right. just doing it with paper. Because paper gives you no endorphin rush. Mm -hmm. There's like no benefit. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've just been getting back into this. I'm gonna combine two of them. A really nice, cu soft, cuddly blanket, which mm. those are so easy to come by now. Yeah. And a nice candle or yeah. oil diffuser. Yeah. Again, the it's basics. It's Huga, right? Huga. It looks like Hygie, but it's Huga. Do you seriously not know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> Have you been under like the biggest rock? I or? live under, it's a boulder. It is like a Anyways, mountain, a small mountain. You all know what I'm talking about. But what is it? It's like the Scandinavian art of making your house oh, cozy right. and... Okay, I, I didn't know if we were talking about like a cool like acronym like when you're texting. Oh no. Like LOL yeah. or... Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But yes, it's all about comfort, like, comfort and cozy and... Yeah. Yeah. And you can have the smallest, simplest space, but you can still incorporate totally. mm -hmm. Luka. Yeah. <laughs> What's cool to me though, like hearing you say like, I don't really have time for self-care, I feel like I've been able to successfully implement it. I feel like if I call you at 8.30 on every, any given night, you're in the bathtub. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's my happy place. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you've incorporated it, you don't feel... No, guilty. I mean, obviously our kids are a little bit older now, yeah. and so, um, but a lot of times, it, yeah, it's after we put the kids to bed. I know they're staying in bed, so I can do that and not get interrupted. Mel Robbins did a Instagram story from her bathtub the other day, <laughs> and I'm like, she's a brave woman. Uh, oh my goodness, yeah. But she talked about the actual physiological effect on our body of a warm bath, yeah. and it's so funny because it's like cost no money, and it can be a huge, you know, way to relieve stress. But that walking, I've talked about a lot. Like, I don't want to sound like a broken record. But even just some of these things I've committed to myself, like, I'm not going to keep clothes in my closet that don't fit. And just because yeah. I spent money on it, reducing the inventory in our house so that I don't have so much to manage and that it's easier to take care of. I feel like minimalism has gone hand in hand with being Absolutely. able to implement this and I just never feel like I'm missing out on anything. Yeah. So, well, and even like to get into the bathtub, you, you're not swimming through piles and piles of toys yeah. and towels and five different bubble baths for the kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even I just feel like your spaces to get to that space to relax, because a lot of us will feel so distracted by the stuff around us and feel right. like, I need to do that, I need to do that, that yeah, we can't even can. get to that mental that's space. True. And yeah, so then to even know that your physical space is supporting that habit mm -hmm. is really a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I mean, probably the number one habit for sustaining our mood and our health, and it's scientifically proven, like meditating 10 minutes per day mm -hmm. actually rewires your brain. Isn't yeah. that amazing? It is. And I've been challenging myself again just to quiet everything down, not be plugged in so much, and just giving my poor brain room to process yeah. and breathe. And then, you know, we've been really committed, especially in the new year here, just keeping up with the Bible reading plan and stuff. And it's so essential. I was reading this passage, and so then I started studying it the other day in that time. And it says, this is Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And I just thought, isn't this interesting? The writer of Hebrews is talking to a church back, you know, um, at the beginning of modern history, right after Jesus came and he's telling them, don't give up meeting together. And I was reading this afresh for this season because it's been a difficult time to meet together yeah. and some of us can't meet in a church right now mm -hmm. or even just meet with friends or to encourage and spur one another on. And yeah. so I was like, I was studying that. I was like, what on earth? Why weren't people getting together back then? A lot of it had to do with, well, I don't associate with them or I don't believe the way they believe. Um, and there was almost a, like a piety and, and just a weird um, kind of arrogance for why people wouldn't get together. So that's definitely not where we are right now. Yeah. But it just shows me the human condition and tendencies just never change. Yeah. And so the writer in Hebrews, he, you know, there's so much 
um, just intense and beautiful spiritual philosophical like reasoning that happens in the book of Hebrews but then when they land the plane the writer is like but let me just pastor you right now you need to spur one another on toward love and good deeds and it was just reminding me as I was reflecting on it that a negative message impacts us 20 mm. times as hard yeah. as a positive message. So another way of saying that is you need to say 20 good things <laughs> to make up for one critical thing that someone may have heard during their day. And yeah. we all just need more of that. And it just continued to remind me to send that text message to encourage someone. Yeah. Pick up the phone. I don't know why I hate talking on the phone. I, know. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know. But pick it up. You know, like, hey, I was just thinking about you today and I remembered yeah. how you did this for me or I love this about you or whatever. Yeah. It feels awkward even as I'm saying it, it sounds awkward, but people are like starving yeah. and they're so thirsty for it. Yeah. And I've realized lately too, we, the kids were at church and then there was a mean girl that like Aww. just like said some very unkind things to the girls. Aww. And I, and, you know, so we're talking it through on the way home and everything, but I realized I'm like, oh, you know, we haven't had the same opportunities to encourage people around us and to be out because a cat, like a cashier or someone, like I'm always trying to say like, oh, those are super cute earrings. Oh, I love yeah. your, your haircut is just so flattering. You know, I think like anyone we encounter, I'm always trying to like model to them, like look for a way to encourage them. And I realized I was like, wow, we haven't been able to do that. And I feel like then when things like are said to us that are mean, it really sticks. Yeah. But when I'm in a different place of like having my eyes focused on other people Others. and how can I encourage yeah. you and build you up and somebody says that, I'm like, well, that's not true. Yeah. And it can, I can really let it bounce. But when I'm just feeling kind of defeated already, it's just like, is that, oh my goodness, that is so true, isn't it? Yeah. That's true, right? It's true, yeah. you know? And so I, I was totally. like, we have to be so intentional right, right now too of like finding other ways to, um, encourage people because I think that helps yeah to take this in stride well and I love it our mom has kind of put a couple of these together because she's been making um, cards like mm -hmm. she crafts and makes like paper cards and she's been making like hundreds of them to bring to the nursing homes just yeah. and that so you're getting the creative habit in you yeah. know and then also getting outside of yourself and just what that does for mm -hmm. your mood and and just your feelings toward the world and the people yeah. around you and it keeps us connected as humans yes and right. um but especially as believers to spur one another on and and to gather you know if we have to do it online right now thank you lord for technology yeah. but stay committed to it yeah you know and even if there's virtual life groups just it's awkward yeah it's hard <laughs> it's not how we used to do things i know i'm very traditional in my personality i don't like it yeah but whatever we can do to stay connected and to spur one another on yeah so father i ask lord that you would give each one of us a special grace and eyes lord to see to see the people around us, Lord, to look for the ways that you've beautifully and wonderfully made them and to encourage them in that, Lord Jesus, to point it out, to celebrate it, to spur them on, Lord, especially during what is very difficult times for many people. So Father, fill us up afresh, Lord, that we may be light, that we may be love, and that we may be selfless toward the people around us and that we can provide that example to the world around us, Lord. And so I just pray for anyone too who's hurting, who's lonely, Lord God, who's who's just needing your comfort right now. Lord, we can have good coffee, we can have soft blankets, but ultimately, you are the source of all joy, of all comfort, and all peace. And so I just pray that each one of us could receive that in a special way right now. And I bless each one of us in Jesus' name, amen.